Uh, it's us again. Uh, I'm sure by now you've all heard about Kenny McKinley. We're going to do our own personal Kenny McKinley tribute video. Uh, we have some great memories of him as a Gamecock. Um, I was about to go to bed last night. A buddy texted me, asked me if I heard what happened. I said no. Um, so I got on the internet, got on Gamecock Central, uh, read some stuff about it. Had Kenny McKinley had died of an apparent suicide in Denver. Um, I know he'd been suffering from some depression. Uh, he had had some injuries with the with the Broncos and apparently had some financial issues as well. Um, and I called you and you told your mom and I told some people. Uh, it was shocking. Uh, I just saw him two weeks ago at the Georgia game. Uh, we were watching the, the team walk in and he was standing right there uh, cheering them on and some of the upperclassmen stopped and gave him a hug. Guys like Garcia and DeMarco and um, Cliff Matthews, some of those guys that actually played with him. And then, uh, you know, we, we were actually coming to meet you and uh, Allie was with me and she was like, hey, let's go over and say hey. And I said, no, nah, we don't need to bother him. I, he had a crowd of people around him. I was like, we just, you know, he probably didn't want to be bothered. So I uh, kind of wish we would have went over there now, um, you know, knowing what happened. But uh, it was a great game, Cock, one of my favorites. Um, always played 100%. Uh, didn't matter who we were playing or uh, what the score was. He always gave it all. Always had a smile on his face. Um, just an all around great role model and really the definition of what a game puck is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, in my eyes, Kenny McKinley, like you said, he's the definition of game cock. I mean, he he wasn't the most talented wide receiver that we've had in years, you know, like Sterling Sharp or mm -hmm. Robert Brooks or Sidney Rice, but he did all the little things right, and that's just that's just something that's just really hard to get out of mm -hmm. players these days. That you know, someone that works hard, someone that runs the routes and runs them correctly and runs them. Hard, you know, blocks down someone field. that blocks downfield, you know, someone that just puts, you know, puts it all on the line for the team, mm -hmm. you know, selflessness. That's that's a major thing. That's like really under underrated in athletes today. Oh yeah, I mean he and he definitely wasn't in it for the for the NFL paycheck that he no. thought was going to come. I mean a lot of guys and we've had some recent players uh, play for the Gamecocks. It was all about me, me, me. Jerry Cook, Emmanuel Cook, come to mind. Yeah. But uh, Kim McKinley was the total opposite. Um, he loved the school. He loved being a Gamecock. He loved playing. Uh, every Saturday, and you know, no matter what happened, he always had a smile on his face. Um, you know, just just, just love to love playing, and uh, you know, it's funny. He ended up the all-time reception leader at Carolina with 207 receptions, and uh, before he was about to break the record, uh, somebody uh, I don't remember who it was interviewed him. Um, he said, you know, in high school he played quarterback, and he only caught one pass, and it was on a trick play. Uh, so you know, that's pretty interesting that um, that uh, he was willing to to switch positions when he got to Carolina. Uh, you know, for the better of the team, a lot of guys would have been hard-headed and stubborn and said, well, I'm going to stick at my position, and if you won't let me play there, I'll transfer. Uh, but not uh, Kenny. He was willing to switch um, to receiver, and it, and it worked out good for him. Uh, got him a contract in the NFL. <coughs> so um have some great memories. Uh, one of my favorite memories of Kenny McKinley was in 2006. Uh, we beat uh, Clemson at Clemson that year, um, and I was sitting in the end zone where Jad Dean missed the field goal. And uh, I was kind of in the Carolina corner of the stadium, and I can remember all the Carolina players running over there and uh, just cheering and so happy, waving a flag. And I remember seeing uh, Mike Davis and Kenny McKinley just jumping up in the air and hugging each other and giving uh, fans high fives. Um, and and I read a thing where uh, it might have been somebody on Gamecock Central or somebody, Scott Hood, uh, asked him what uh, his favorite memory as a Gamecock was, and he said that was that game. And um, that's definitely something. Uh, a memory that I always remember about Kenny McKinley. So I'm sure you've got some. Uh, mine would be the Liberty Bowl. I mean, that was just, you know, a fun atmosphere. I loved going to Memphis. It was a really fun time. And, you know, it was a high-scoring game, something that we weren't really used to. I mean, right. I mean, we were throwing it all over the place. Yeah. I mean, Blake Mitchell, you know, I mean, wasn't perfect by no means. You know, I'm pretty sure he threw some picks or whatnot. But, I mean, everyone was just bombing the ball downfield. I mean, it was yeah. a great game. And Kenny, you know, caught one on the sidelines made a move and just made that DB look, you know, really silly, silly yeah, yeah, and ended up scoring. And I just saw a picture of Kenny on the internet, you know, after, you know, I heard what happened and, you know, everyone started adding Kenny McKinley as their profile picture, you know, to kind of honor him. And I was looking for mine and I saw that one and it was just too small of a picture, you know, and didn't really work out well. But it just made me remember that, that mm -hmm. game and that was probably one of my favorite games that he played in. Oh, yeah. And, you know, just like I, we both grew up going to Carolina games since we were oh, kids. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you watch these guys week after week, uh, game after game, year after year for four, sometimes five years, you know, and, and you really feel like you – you know these players, um, you know, you grow up idolizing these guys and say so you watch them every week and you really feel like you, 
you know them, even though you really don't. I yeah. mean, you feel like uh, you watch them and you and you read about them on the internet. So uh, it's definitely a, a, a shocker, um, especially coming from a guy like Kenny. I'm every time I saw him, he was smiling. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know what was going on in his life to make him think that, that suicide was the answer, and and I definitely never think that that is the answer. Um, you know, he has a son. Like I said, I saw him two weeks ago at the Georgia game with his son playing around, um, smiling like he always did. So, you know, I just wish he would ask for help because um, he's he's beloved Gamecock. Um, he could have come home and, you know, had a job um, doing pretty much whatever he wanted to do. Um, they've got his name in the stadium on uh, one of the ramps, um, you know, just kind of um, have a memorial of him. Um, and I do think that in the near future they need to go ahead and retire his jersey. Uh, for the rest of the year they probably need to, or they don't. They don't probably need to. They need to have a patch yeah. um, with a KM on it or something to, yeah. to honor McKinley. Um, like I said, none of that crap. None of that wearing the jersey because Seth Strickland's number eleven now, and I just see it as disrespectful. If, like like some people on you know a Facebook post about Kenny said, Alshon should wear the number eleven jersey. Well, it's not about Alshon honoring him and not belittling Seth Strickland and saying, you have to give up your jersey so mm-hmm. Alshon can honor him. I'm worthy to honor yeah, him. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's not what it's about. It's about honoring him as a team and showing that, you know, Kenny McKinley, the Gamecocks miss you, mm-hmm. not Alshon Jeffrey or Tory Gurley right. or people, you know. Yeah. It's, it's about a team, you know. We need to cut out the individualism on all aspects of the game. Mm-hmm. It needs to be team efforts in everything that we do. Definitely. And that's how you, that's how you'll be successful, you know, when you have, you know, people doing it for themselves. That's mm-hmm. where things start to go wrong. Yeah, definitely and and like I say, a lot of these a lot of the upperclassmen played with him. I mean, you know, Garcia played uh, with him, uh, Cliff Matthews and DeMarco and a lot of those guys actually played with him, so um, I'm sure it's been hard for them to prepare for Auburn. But uh Kenny left a, a great reputation of, of worth ethic, uh for the way playing receivers should be done at Carolina. And then I'm friends with Tory Gurley on Facebook, and it's nice to see that, you know, he, he understands how good of a receiver he was and, and is going to follow um, follow his path that he paved uh, for future receivers at Carolina. Yeah. So um, a lot of great memories of uh, Kenny, and it's always nice to see um, guys that are proud of the school that they went to. Um, yeah. You get a lot of guys that go to the NFL, and college is just a – a small step, step to the NFL, yeah, and uh, for Kenny, it was it was it was just for fun. Um, you know, you saw him on TV. Always had a Carolina shirt on. Always wanted to know what was going on with the Gamecocks. Mm-hmm. Came back um, mm-hmm. when he could, so it's always nice to see that. And it's definitely a hard loss uh, for the Gamecock Nation, um, especially considering this guy graduated just two years ago. Yeah. You know, it's 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 crazy. And like I said, the school is all time reception layer, but uh, it'll always. Um, have some great memories to leave us with. Um, some exciting games. Um, you know, Spurrier said it. Uh, you know, that he was one of his all-time favorites, and that so that that's a pretty big come for Spurrier because yeah. he's coached a lot of guys. And for him to say that uh, McKinley was one of his all-time favorites is is speaks a lot to what he thought of him. So, and it's like you said, Spurrier's coached you know many championship teams and everything. And you know, I you know before all this happened, you know, I would have thought that you know. A lot of Spurrier's favorite athletes would have been, you know, the guys that he coached at Florida, Florida because Werfel, yeah, they won him guys. championships, mm-hmm. you know. But I mean, it just goes to show you that you know, people that you know work hard and you know do all the small things right, it, it does get you noticed. Oh, yeah. and yeah, it gives yeah. you a lot of recognition. Definitely, and, like like I said, that's why he probably he saw the field. I mean, he wasn't yeah. the most talented, but he worked hard at what yeah. he did, and yeah. you know, and that and that obviously paid off well for him. Like I said, he never played receiver in high school, he caught one pass. So, I mean, he had to do some do some serious work to be able to play receiver in the SEC and ended up either second or third um, on the all-time SEC reception leader. So uh, he definitely made his mark uh, in Columbia and uh, around the conference. So um, he'll be missed by all of us. Uh, you know, always had a good smile on his face. Uh, and I just keep his family and his son uh, in our thoughts and, and just and wish them well. So, uh, Kenny, forever a Gamecock. Miss you. Rest in peace.